book, you're looking at parallelograms, and then you're looking at um, pictures like this. So there's some vocab that you'll have to talk about, and one of the words that you need to know is um, vertical angles. And I know that that comes in um, here and transversals. So kind of in general, those are the new words, transversals and vertical angles. And all of the things in this reading come from parallelograms. So your goals today are to be able to solve problems involving parallel lines, finding missing angles. Um, that's the big goal. If I give you any kind of problem with parallel lines or parallelograms and angles, you should be able to find all the missing angles using properties. Does that make sense? Okay. So when you looked at number one, which some of you said you were already on B. So Sammy, when you looked at part A here, what did you find out? Uh, well, any, like just in general. So tell me some things you know. For one example, what patterns you draw like measures of opposite angles in any parallelogram. Yeah. I said. So patterns. Yeah, I said that um, the opposite angle is the same. Okay. And how do you know that? Did you did you just guess or did you actually measure? Well, they all the. All four of the angles out to 360. Okay, so how do you, yes, all four angles out to 360. So did you just guess? Well, I just knew it, but I don't know how I Okay, it. it's a fair question. So you could have just used intuition, you kind of guessed. My question is, did you measure or trace with patty paper? Okay, so if you measured or you traced with patty paper, you should have seen what Sammy saw, is that the angles, the opposite angles of the parallelogram are the same. So um, if I just went in and sort of check this angle, there we go, and measured um, the angle, I'm going to actually get the supplement out here. Maybe I'm not. Did it come out? There it is. So I'm going to blow that up here. And it wasn't quite perfect. I might not have had it perfectly lined up. But let's just go through and see. I measured the angle outside. And these two angles form a line, right? So this really should have been 45 if I was more careful. And this would then be 135. So if I took a little more care, or if I had a little, a little bit, if I was being a little more accurate, hopefully that is one way you could see the opposite angles are congruent. Or you could do a tracing, you know, with a patty paper and just trace over the angle. Right? And that's really pretty rough tracing. But they should fit. Right? They should be the same. So there should be some thinking that leads you to that conclusion. <coughs> Okay, so if we do agree that the opposite angles are 135, what do you know about angle all the angles in a quadrilateral? Yeah. Okay, Ben. Uh, they add up to 360. They add up to 360. Okay, so Suki, what's 135 and 135? Oh, well, you add those two. Yeah, I actually was trying to figure out. What were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say that. Um, the angle right next to it, like the angle C uh -huh. or angle A for D, is the um, supplement? It is. So let's go back to Ben's. Okay. Um, so what Ben was talking about and tie it into what you're talking about. So the supplement is the key here, yeah. but it comes from the polygon sum thing. So you know that there's four angles. In a quadrilateral, and those four angles have to add up to 360. If we know the opposite angles of the parallelogram are congruent, what's 135 and 135? Yeah, AJ. It's 270, so I can take 360 and subtract 270. And I'm going to actually post these notes. If you if you have trouble writing the notes and listening, just listen, and I'll post them as a PDF on the website. 
I think for some people that's just going to be more helpful. So when I subtract here, I get 90, right? You guys agree? Yeah. Okay. Now I have to take that 90 and I have to break it into two equal parts because I know the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So 90 divided by 2 45. is 45. So 45 degrees is angle C and 45 degrees is also angle A. Okay? And it was also that angle out here. And that's what Suki was saying is, if you look at the 135, the opposite angle is going to be the same. And the, the next angle, which is the consecutive angle, the angle next to it, is going to be the supplement. And that, that's going to happen in every parallelogram. So for example, if we look at this parallelogram over here, um, we zoom out a little bit. For this one here, I know the opposite angles are the same. So this is 60. And then I'm going to take my 360 and I can subtract 120, which is 240 divide that into half and I get 120 or I could use what is a shorter method which is the observation Suki had is these two angles always have to be supplementary. So you have two ways to get to that same value. Does that make sense? Yeah. Alex. It's a it's a so yes, so in a parallelogram if we talk about the word conjectures there's some there's some rules. Those are conjectures. Okay, so the first rule is the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. say equal in measure. So that's the first one. And then the second one is the consecutive angle. So consecutive means one after another. So in, instead of instead of these are opposite, these are consecutive and these are consecutive. You know, if you went in order around the figure, that's what the word consecutive means. So the consecutive angles of a par parallelogram are supplementary. Okay, so you can just add up half the angle and get 180. Or like, you can just take the one angle that it gives you and then see what it takes to make that 180. Right. Since it's always opposite. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we have this picture here, and we have um, these rules. And so if I start again, and I, I'm told I have a parallelogram, you have to have a parallelogram because I work with every quadrilateral, and I have one angle, I know the opposite angles are equal. And then it turns out the consecutive angles, so consecutive angles are if you start at one and just sort of go around the figure. This is M and L are consecutive because they come one after another. L and K are consecutive. So just kind of going around the figure, the consecutive angles are supplementary. So 60 plus what has to be 180? 120. So that's the shortest way to do the problem. So the longer way, just the longer way is sometimes valuable because it draws on old things. So sometimes it makes more sense until the shorter way clicks. The longer way is if you understand that you have two 60s in your figure, that sums to be 120. And that's kind of what Ben was saying. He knew quadrilateral has a 360 degree total. If you take out the two 60s, 
you end up with 240 degrees. And now you know that the opposite angles, which are the missing angles here, well, this angle and this angle here, if I didn't know that 120 yet, and I forgot the other conjecture, I could use the property that opposite angles are congruent, and I would get that both of them are 120. And then hopefully after a while, you would start to recognize both conjectures and use whichever one's handy. Opposite angles are equal, consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay? Isaiah. Um, well, so you can just assume that there's going to be the same as like the minimum. If it's a parallelogram. Only if it's a parallelogram. Because, and that's where I brought the protractor in, right? In a parallelogram, you have this special property, but if I just had a quadrilateral and it's not a parallelogram, none of that's going to be true. Starting with the opposite angles aren't going to be equal, and even without a protractor, you can see that because if I just take that and try to line it up here, it's you don't have congruent opposite angles, so only in a parallelogram. But once you have a parallelogram, then you know it's true. So, so those are the big rules on that section. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so what happens is the next section, if you didn't get to there, that's okay. We're going to just take a look at this next page here. Don't you see a parallelogram in here? Exactly. So basically you have like this picture right here that has a parallelogram because if you look at the reading, so there's a parallelogram, right? And then um, when you look at this, it says suppose your conjectures of question A are true, the ones we just talked about, the lines below for a parallel parallelogram, and the parallelogram you're supposed to be looking at is is this parallelogram right here. So I mean you could kind of visualize it there. Right? So, so then you need to look at the 150. You see the 150 still in that picture? If you just look at this 150 and use the property, you should be able to find all the angles in that picture. Because we could start with the opposite angles are congruent. So H is 150. Oh, okay. So, yes, some of you have that quickly. Let's talk about G and O. They have to be 30. Because they're consecutive angles. <coughs> like, for example, this angle O is consecutive with this, and they are supplementary, so this has to be 30 degrees. Okay, and this <coughs> opposite angles are congruent, so that has to be 30 degrees. Katie? Um, does it mean to put like two L's? For, that's an I. Oh. I think one's an I and one's an L. Okay. Okay. But it seems to be capitalized at the one thing, right? Okay. It means yeah, and mine's a little blurry, so we'll just find the no, measures. It's like the exact same one on Twitter. Maybe it's a typo. Remember, it's a new edition. So, with this 30 here, let's say this 30 right here, the supplement of 30 is 150, and these form a line, don't they? So the angle out here has to be 150. And then these two are supplementary, so this angle M has to be, what's M? 30, right? So one of the other vocab words in your book is vertical angles. And you, you need to know what vertical angles are just so when you're reading, you understand what to look at. So vertical angles are angles that are formed by two intersecting lines that are opposite, like 30. And these two angles right here are vertical angles. They're, they're formed by intersecting lines and they're opposite of each other. So another pair of vertical angles could be these two. They're opposite. They're like opposite angles formed by intersecting lines. So when you read, you want to make sure you understand what 
what they mean by vertical angles. So this angle has to be, angle N has to be what? 150, right? So then down here, what's angle B? 150. And A is 30. And you just keep working your way around the picture. And you can find all the missing angles. Just from giving that one angle to begin with. So F is 150, right? And E is 30, C is 150. And this is always true when the lines are parallel. When they're not parallel, it won't be true. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So this is 30, this is 150, and 30. So for example, if I had parallel lines with the third line traversing it, one of the other words in your reading is transversal. A transversal is just a line that crosses other lines. It's a fancy word. But it's easy for us to do reading if I say take a look at, you know, line one and line two and the transversal. Just supposed to be able to look at the picture and know that like that. It's just a line. A transversal is another line that comes up in your reading. Now, if you have parallel lines, all of those things are true. But imagine if I had almost the same picture, but the black lines weren't parallel anymore. So none of those things are going to be true. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you can see, for example, that you know this angle here doesn't really look like that angle out there anymore, does it? So it's only when you have that parallelogram, that parallel property. Does that make sense? Because when the lines aren't parallel anymore, you have this picture, right, where you have just some other quadrilateral. Okay, any questions on part C? Isaiah. So is this another way to find all the angles? It's just a quick way to find all the angles okay. using that property of parallel lines. Wow. So then how do you like the, like the bottom right one? How do you know? Okay, fine. Sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was trying to get rid of these lines because I <laughs> can't, can't get rid of them. All right. The quickest way is to do this and then put my picture back. Because I don't want that to confuse you later. But I'll post notes, and I think it would be helpful to have an example or feedback. Okay. So what if you have something like this? Now I don't have parallel lines, but I still have a parallelogram. AJ? You could turn it into a problem using your properties. It doesn't, though, because remember, if we go back to the first page, and uh, just let's look at that first page, and see if I can... Let's try to pin it. <coughs> it's not letting me. Okay, but AJ, these two rules, the opposite angles are equal, but the consecutive angles are supplementary. And you have consecutive angles here. So what would you do? Yeah, so 3x plus 2x plus 1 sum to 180, because they're consecutive, they're not opposite. So that would give you 5x, I hear some of you guys saying, plus 1 equals 180. But these are kind of messy numbers. So 5x equals 179. Let's just practice short division here. How many times have 5 going to 17? 3. 3, right? And the remainder? Two. So how many times does five go into twenty-seven? 
Five. Five. What's the remainder? Two. How many times is five going to 29? Five. Oh, but sorry, I lost my train of thought. The remainder was four, right? So four fifths. I, I just, yeah, I lost my train of thought. So I'm not sure if I messed you up doing that. So five goes into 17 three times, right? The remainder is two. Five goes into 29 five times. Yeah. The remainder is four, so you have 35 and four fifths. That's just x. Okay. So what is that? 35 point. Practice your benchmark fractions. Eight. Eight. Right. Can I check my work? Yes. Yeah. How? Sammy. 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 Do one. Let's have one person. You use the five x plus one and you replace. Um, okay, you could you could do it here, but could you triple 35.8? Yeah. Yeah, if I tripled that, and then I plugged it in here, also, I should get supplementary angles. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Oh, instead of three? I did. So triple, so let's triple that. So three times 35.8. We're gonna just check it with the calculator real quick. Um, calculator here. So 35.8 times three is 107.4. So that's this one, which means it's this one, right? And then I'm going to do 2 times 35.8 and add 1 to it. And I get 72.6. And that's this one, which is this one, right? So these two should add up to 180. So messy numbers, a little messy for a quiz. But it still should work, even with messy numbers. Do you see that? Yeah. So that's about as hard as a problem you get. The numbers are messy, there's algebra, it's a two-step problem, you're using other properties. That's kind of everything <laughs> in a problem. What about, um, can I keep going? Yes. Okay. So. I think for this, you know, this is just looking at the pages in your book. I think we've got that, right? The transversal is just the line that crosses other lines. So when they talk about a transversal, that's all they're talking about. And now they don't have a parallelogram here. But they tell us that angle F is 80 degrees. But my question is, don't you... Can you see that you can sort of visualize this the same? Like if I took another line and put it over here, there's sort of the parallelogram property, right? You know what I'm saying? So like you can almost sort of see it does give you 80 below. Like you could see that there's a parallelogram sort of there. You see what I'm talking about? So even though it's not really in the problem, you can visualize that when you see a problem like that. Because what you know is that in a parallelogram, the consecutive angles, which are F and what? F and G. No, those are vertical. But we know G is 80. Those are supplementary. F and A. So, F and, C. F and C, remember in a parallelogram. <laughs> okay, so if you had a parallelogram, if I numbered them 1, 2, 3, and 4, angles 1 and angle 4, those are consecutive. Same with um, angles 1 and 2. 
they come in pairs. You see that? So I'm not sure if you guys see that. You have to answer. Yeah. Yeah. So like if they come one after another, one and four are consecutive, four and three are consecutive, two and three are consecutive. Garrett, let of you to the front desk, please. Garrett, let of you to the front desk. Garrett, let of you to the front desk. So all of those are consecutive pairs and they always add up to 180. So even if you don't have a parallelogram, you if they come one after another like that, they're going to add to 180. You see that? Yeah. Okay, Isaiah. How did I get the 80? Yeah, I was going to like how you could do that without even getting it. I just oh. took the 80 from there. <laughs> Sorry. If it didn't give it to you. You would have to have something. Okay. But if it did give it to you and, and I, or I gave it to you, then could you find all of the angles in that problem? Yes. yes. So, Naya, can you tell me some of them? Like, A? A would be A. <laughs> so, it's a vertical. Well, let's do it. Is he, if this is 100, what's B? Because it's supplementary, right? Yeah. So, then what's A? 100. Does that make sense? And so these vertical angles, these are vertical angles, the ones that are opposite, they're always equal. Even when, no matter what, vertical angles are always equal. And then what about D, Katie? 80. 80. And what about E, um, Kayla? It is 100. 100, right? And then, um, Hannah, what about H? Yeah. And they're all degrees, right? Raise your hand if that makes sense. Everybody's good? Thanks. AJ? Yeah. Okay. Keep going? Yeah. Cool. So, here's a couple algebra problems. Can you try E? E. This is. This really has not to do with parallel, but to do with vertical. So, it says, you know what? Use what you know about supplementary and vertical angles, write the equation, and then find the value. And I had two problems. They gave you one, but I also think you should do the one down here. Do both of those. So I'm going to pause it, work on those, and then we'll look at our. Okay, what about one? What do you do, Catherine? Um, well, you know that. 6x plus 5 plus x equals 180. Right. So it's 7x equals 180. Exactly. Because they form a line, so they're supplementary. Mm -hmm. So 7x plus 5 equals 180. So you subtract 5 Good. from 180, which is um, 175. Right. And then you, you divide 175 by 7, Good. which would be 25. <laughs> right. So can we check it? What's if I check it? This would be twenty-five, right? And what's six times twenty-five? Uh, one hundred and fifty. And if I add five to that, and one hundred and fifty-five plus one hundred and twenty-five makes one hundred and eighty. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. So this problem down here is different because we don't have the angles that are next to each other. We have the angles that are opposite. We have the vertical angles here, right? And vertical angles are equal, right? If you look back at the pictures, their vertical angles are always equal. So what do we do with those two? Yes, you do x plus 50, not equals 50. x plus, x plus 50 equals 2x. So subtract 1x from both sides, and you get 50 equals 1x, right? So, what? <laughs> Do we see that? So what's 50 plus 50? So this is 100, and what's 2 times 50? 100. 100. 
So it works, right? So the other two would be 80. Like if I put a Y in here, you would then just tell me Y is 80. So I'm going to stop that. And post I won't save it yet. Um, that's why. Yeah.